Well, we see like three kind of challenges. First being uh, network performance, then we see scalability as a challenge, and then ultimately kind of the orchestration and management of the system itself. And so let me kind of break down the three of them. So the first one being network performance. I mean, we're looking at ChatGPT3 had about 45 terabytes of, of data itself and 176 different billion parameters that had to work through. Now we start to think about this new evolution and we change and bring in more data and as we go from like ChatGPT to ChatGPT4, we're shifting from having you know 176 billion parameters now to 1.6 trillion uh, parameters themselves. Interesting enough, that's only a magnitude more. But the data grows by three magnitudes. We go from about 45 billion or trillion up to about 38 pentabytes of data itself. And so what that means itself is a network needs to shift around a ton of data from one server to another. And now you're looking at things like, you know, 10, 40, 50 gigs are not enough. You need 200, 400, or 800 gigs of bandwidth to move data from one to another. When something gets synthesized in these clusters, all the data needs to move to another spot for another cluster to synthesize it. So that means you need an immense amount of network performance to shift that data. Now the scalability part of that is that the, the fact is that to move that, it's all time dependent. And you just don't want to use one or two different links themselves. You have to scale this network to be able to leverage everything within the links themselves and the, and the connections themselves to shift the data as quick as possible with no errors or no problems or latency within that itself. And so you think about this capability of being able to load balance across multiple types of links, not just one or two, and look far enough ahead to have this whole system talk to optimize the transfer of information itself. Then the third part of this is the operations and the orchestration of it. The thing is that in this new environment with AI, nothing can go down. There can't be milliseconds or nanoseconds. Things need to be done. So when you do a configuration change, you do an update, a management, a firmware change itself, you have to have a, almost nine, ten nines reliability within the system itself. And shifting to this environment is a very dramatic change that goes on within the typical network inside of a data center itself. So now we have to really think about network performance, we have to think about scalability, and we have to think about orchestration and management of this environment itself. Traditionally in the past, the data center did everything, and we used to think about it just kind of an app-centric kind of data center. The network just really had to deal with asynchronous flows, uh, elephant and, and small mouse flows themselves, and it just, things were important, but not as important as artificial intelligence brings in this environment. And one of the things too, shifting around, is the idea that the data center is no longer this kind of general platform. We got general computing in one spot that, um, in, in theory, is just you know managing and synthesizing through and, and serving applications to the end users. Then we have this other part, of this high performance compute area, that's synthesizing and interning data and, and making sure that it's making predictions around what goes on and, and, and running through the environment itself where latency and quickness itself of the data, manipulation of data and the transfer of data is very critical. And then we have this other area of the storage network where all the data is being kept and then ensuring this thing. Now with this world where this whole data center encompasses all of them, it's not generic anymore. We've shifted applications out of the data center that's not important and we're keeping things in there, yes, in a general compute area that may be sensitive and needs to be done and created just in that side of the data center. But now with AI, we've got the need for a high compute part of the data center itself, and then storage becomes an intimate part of what needs to occur to support these two environments, really being that third area. And so in this environment itself, then, you have to have all three working together. You have to have this data center become much more specialized and dynamic in, in, in itself, but yet encompass these three types of domains themselves. And so one of the things is we see that like general compute and then high PC, HPC being two parts of it, but then we see the data, the, the storage part of it, really start to transfer over and become part of the ethernet and embrace that so all three can be interacting together and support where businesses are going with their digitalization as well as their usage of artificial intelligence. The realities are the idea that one network or one provider can provi provide all the connections everywhere and go through that just doesn't make just doesn't 
reality of it. In multi-cloud, you're gonna use a platform to for computational, for storage, and their network, which not might not be the same network as your own. And so already there, your environment where there's a heterogeneous and connections between of them. You throw an edge, you know, add another maybe variable to it, or you add another data center because of the legacy. Maybe it's another scenario. I know I have a bank that's using a vendor A and then using vendor B in the data, one data center and vendor A in another data center. So the realities are that from this point on, it, you're going to have this heterogeneous environment and you really need this type of orchestration system to span across all these different environments. And so the good thing about it is that it really increases the reliability of the system itself because one vendor, in theory, if it were everywhere, one mistake could cause uh, a domino effect, a, a wave of, of problems for the entire business itself because the error would propagate everywhere. But the reality is of having kind of this multi-vendor system really increases the reliability of the underlying network. Now the second piece of that is really the competitiveness of the business as well as them having the ability to have multiple partners and to choose best of breed and intertwine them together to make sure that they have the most you know best built network to support the business itself and it's already seen that by going out the cloud the choice is i want to use this resource for my computational thing so i'm going to use that network to enhance my business and then i have my data center network already there is a computational enhancement to the business so now we just propagate it out to campus or go out to remote office. The ideas that you're going to have different parts of the network are just important. And that you have to have a management system, an autonomic management system, be able to manage all these environments in as one big environment itself. And then the third thing about it is just the reliability of the system itself. You'll be able to bring in and have a system that's that's reliable and serves the business and be able to make the changes as quick as the business needs to change and be able to take each of the components and replace them as needed to support the business. So those are the three things we say are, are important to the challenges of where things are going. The reality is you're not buying from one vendor anymore. You don't have one vendor. You would have this very heterogeneous environment. You have multiple vendors and you need a management system that has the ability to communicate with all of them and manage it as a big business-wide networking fabric.